My next guest is uh, Dr. Ben Tuntela, is that I correctly? And uh, a colleague that I've worked with in the past, and I thought that I was so fascinated by his work and his, his mission and how far it has reached that I thought it was worth sharing with the rest of you. So, here's Ben. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jay, for inviting me here. Thanks, Ed and Philip, for uh, setting everything up. Um, it's really an honor to uh, be here this afternoon. Uh, the uh, subject I'm going to be speaking about today is science, um, and I'm actually the founder of the BioBus. Now, the BioBus is a mobile science lab. It drives around the city, um, goes parks in front of the school. Uh, students climb on board the BioBus and they do science experiments. And uh, I'm going to show you a little video clip uh, of what it looks like inside of the bus. So this was actually a uh, Japanese <coughs> television crew that came on board the BioBus. It was a live broadcast to Tokyo. Um, it was 6 o'clock. Uh, in Washington Heights, and it was, I think, 7 a.m. in Japan. And inside the BioBus, you can see we've got a number of amazing microscopes set up, um, and students come on board and they're able to use these incredible microscopes donated to us, brand new, from companies like Olympus, Nikon, Zeiss, Modic, Swift, and they use these microscopes, the same microscopes I used during my PhD, to do hands-on experiments inside of the BioBus is all about finding, finding things in the natural world that you never expected to be there. Um, you just saw um, a, a tour of the front of the bus, uh, a couple of students uh, checking out some samples there. Um, there's a back room of the bus, it's an old, uh, it's a 40 foot transit bus, it's a converted San Francisco uh, transit bus that went over the Golden Gate Bridge back in the 70s. Um, now uh, we've got a, the microscope room in the front that you see, and we've got this rear room, um, which is more of like an auditorium. Uh, we can also set up uh, a number of uh, other microscopes in the back of the bus. Can students on there. <laughs> Not only is the, uh, the BioBus full of microscopes, um, it's also a uh, completely carbon neutral operation on a daily basis. So we've got solar panels on the roof. Um, this is actually a picture of the BioBus at Solar One, uh, which is uh, on the East River, uh, downtown Manhattan. Um, in addition to uh, solar panels, we've got the wind turbine uh, the front of the bus. Those two things combine to make all the electricity for the lab, the microscopes, the computers, the lights, everything inside. Um, on the roof of the bus, this is actually uh, the almost two years of having a, a garden growing on the roof of the bus. Um, it's a green roof uh, that keeps the bus cool in the summertime. And it's something that's being uh, installed more and more uh, as a way to make buildings more efficient. Uh, in addition, uh, we actually use a pellet burning stove to keep the inside of the bus warm. Uh, so the bus is basically a uh, one room schoolhouse, um, sort of harkening back to the days uh, you know, like a little house on the prairie, um, except uh, it's a one room schoolhouse that can drive around. Um, as we call ourselves the, uh, the ice cream truck of science. Uh, we park in front of schools and uh, the students get to come on and try, uh, try out science, uh, see how it tastes, um, see what they think about it, and they get to interact with scientists on board the BioBus um, to uh, get a sense for who scientists are, get an idea that scientists are everyday people that um, aren't always holed up in a lab somewhere. And the whole point of the BioBus is to democratize science. Our mission is to make science something that's not only practiced in the ivory towers at Columbia, where I did my PhD, or <coughs> NYU, that gives uh, us space right now, but that the, those science labs, those people who work in those labs, can actually get out um, and spread their knowledge, spread their passion, spread their excitement for science, and hopefully light a fire in the communities that we visit to uh, get them passionate about the scientific problems that are out there, the big problems that we're facing. Like, how do we make energy um, without destroying our planet, which is, I think, one of the biggest problems that we face in our time. 
So in order to do that, in order to get people passionate and excited about scientific problems, um, I think uh, we have to just let them do it themselves. So for instance, um, one of the critters that we look at on the bio bus is actually this strange looking alien. That's a color burning stove. <laughs> this strange looking alien. Um, this is uh, a small crustacean in uh, real size. This animal is about the size of the tip of your pencil, <coughs> three, four millimeters long. And uh, this is actually a picture that a student made using one of the BioBus microscopes to enlarge that creature uh, to about 40 times its normal size. Actually, on this screen, <laughs> it's probably 200 times its normal size. Uh, this thing might crawl off the side of the Empire State Building start picking people up. Um, so this is Daphnia. Daphnia is a relative of the shrimp. It's a tiny little crustacean, and it's a New Yorker. Uh, the first time that I found Daphnia was actually um, not too far from where uh, Jay worked uh, at the Bronx Institute. Um, it was actually in a ditch on the side of Moshu Parkway. And we were at a school, a middle school, uh, up, uh, up in the northwest. Uh, part of the Bronx, and um, it was in between classes, and we were looking for cool pond water samples to show the protozoa and amoeba crawling around. And then I saw this tiny little thing swimming around inside of the water. So we pulled it out, put it on the microscope, and here was Daphne. Turns out that Daphne is actually quite an interesting organism to a lot of scientists. Um, its genome was just sequenced uh, last year. Is it edible? Excuse me? Is it edible? Uh, <laughs> this is a common question that students ask uh, after, they've after they discover that it's related to a shrimp. Um, I guess so. <laughs> you could maybe uh, grow you know, a couple thousand of them and push them into a, like, a Daphne burger, perhaps. <laughs> we should try that. <laughs> but um, uh, on, on the lab uh, when we're not eating da in the lab when we're not eating Daphne, we are um, looking at uh, the different body parts inside of it. Um, and uh, you can see that it's got that eye in the front. Um, does anybody else see any other organs that they, that they recognize here? Anything that they might identify with? Any crustaceans in the crowd? <laughs> Is that area in the back the ink? Good, so there's really good. So there's a, there's, a, there's a dark sort of stripe around the back. Are you, let's see, is my mouse working here? No. Um, so that sort of longish line that sort of comes <coughs> around in the back. So that's actually Daphnia's digestive tract. Um, that's its intestines. And we, we're actually looking at food and the process of being digested inside of this animal right now. Um, the animal will poop regularly when it's on the microscope, something that middle school students and elementary school students love to see. Uh, and uh, what, what, you, what you start realizing is that this couple of millimeter long organism uh, is actually very similar to us in a lot of basic ways. Um, it has an eye. It has a digestive system. You can actually watch movies. Um, the students can make movies of this animal actually swallowing food. You can see food going through its trachea. Um, so it's one of these transparent animals that scientists totally flip out about because we can see what's going on inside of it while it is still alive. We don't have to kill it. Um, in fact, the students are very, very protective over Daphnia once uh, they learn about all these different things that are inside of it. And uh, in addition, I'm going to show you in the next slide a quick movie that zooms into um, uh, one part of the Daphnia, um, sort of around on the very top part of this picture. <clears throat> so this is a zoomed in version of that. And does anybody know what's going on on the left here? Right, exactly. This is, a, this is Daphne's heart beating. So again, we're talking about a <coughs> two millimeter long crustacean. Okay? And the students collect this thing from ponds, puddles, ditches, uh, swamps uh, around their school. And they bring this thing onto the bus they discover that it has all these amazing parts inside of it. They take pictures of that, they make movies of that, um, and they totally freak out. Uh, they don't stop talking about the bio bus for months, sometimes years after we're gone. The teachers will email us and tell us that they're wondering when, when the bio bus is coming back. If, if we, um, 
don't get a chance to get to uh, Indiana that year. Um, the students really are upset. Um, we spend about 75% of our time in New York City, uh, like this guy. Um, and uh, it was actually, one of the highlights of my time on the bio bus was when I got a call from Rebecca Skloot. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if any of you have read the book, uh, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. But um, it's an amazing, amazing book. Highly recommend uh, history of the first uh, immortalized cell line. Um, it was the cells that scientists grew in huge, huge quantities to create the polio vaccine. And she was a poor black woman from rural Maryland, um, and uh, she had cancer. And her cancer cells turned out to be these amazing, uh, highly, uh, uh, rapidly reproducing cells. Um, she died, and her family didn't learn about those cells, and that they had cured polio uh, for decades afterwards. So it's a really interesting cultural story. She was on this guy's show, and uh, she invited me to come down because Stephen Colbert wanted his cells to be immortalized, of course. <laughs> Um, so here's uh, Stephen on the bus. Um, I'm uh, way overdressed in the center there. And um, uh, the uh, woman uh, on uh, the right side of the screen, uh, that's Latasha Wright. Um, she's actually one of our board of directors. We're a nonprofit organization. Uh, she's one of our board members. And uh, she's also a longtime visiting scientist. So one of the things that we do on the bus is it's not just me, uh, uh, you know, trying to get the kids excited about science. It's also scientists from all over the city that help us teach. Um, scientists with all different kinds of backgrounds um, that can really get the students that we visit uh, inspired. And again, thinking about science as something that they can do. Um, so here's uh, Stephen. Stephen is looking a little bit, um, I think. Uh, you know, uptight because I just pricked his finger with a, uh, a, di a diabetes lancet um, and got a, about a, a milliliter of his blood. Um, now, we don't normally do that experiment. It was a special one for him. Um, but we were able to make this movie um, on the bio bus. Does anybody know what kind of cell this is? <coughs> the, 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 the hint is is how it's moving. Um, and then these are, those sort of white blobs around it are, are, are a different kind of cell. Um, this is actually a, one of your white blood cells. This is happening inside of your body right now. Um, there are neutrophils crawling around, uh, <coughs> just like that guy was, um, and they're searching for bacteria. They're searching for bacteria to eat to keep your body healthy and uh, free of infection. So um, uh, this is one of Stephen Colbert's news refills, um, and uh, that ended up being on the Colbert Report to my uh, great uh, happiness. I've published many, uh, many peer-reviewed scientific uh, journals uh, in my life, but this is definitely my uh, most uh, high-profile piece of data ever. Um, so this slide is meant to uh, uh, well, be a, pu a little puzzling. What's the similarity between Stephen Colbert and a swamp? <laughs> so as it turns out, um, Stephen Colbert and swamps do have something in common. Uh, I'm going to show you on this next slide. So one of these cells is a type of cell that you would find in Stephen Colbert's body and your body. <coughs> and one of these other cells is a cell that you would find in a swamp. Uh, and this is, uh, these are uh, the movie on the right is actually the movie that we made, that students made on the bio bus. Um, the movie on the right is actually an amoeba crawling. I can play those movies for you again. So the movie on the right is an amoeba crawling around looking for bacteria to eat in a swamp. There's a lot of bacteria in the swamp. That's why they smell so bad. And these amoeba are in there, and they're crawling around, and they're eating those, swamp for, eating those uh, bacteria for dinner. Um, on the left, you've got a white blood cell. That white blood cell is inside of your body and is eating bacteria for dinner. Um, so it turns out that uh, there are a lot of incredibly striking similarities between the kinds of movies that um, uh, you can make of cells from your own body and the kinds of movies that you can find in a swamp. Um, this is a great evolutionary lesson to learn. Um, we actually evolved from amoeba. It's true. Well, at least I think it's true. 
Um, we're going to Kansas uh, for a couple of school visits uh, yeah, the end, at the end of November. Um, we'll see uh, how much pushback there is against that <laughs> idea there. Um, but, uh, but, but they can do the experiment. They can, they can look at the amoeba and compare how similar those amoeba crawl compared to our own, our own cells. Um, so uh, these are just a couple of examples of types of experiments that we do um, on the bus. Uh, this is uh, Sarah. Sarah is uh, the other full-time staff member on the bio bus. Um, she's on the, on the right there. And Mark Allegro <coughs> is uh, the, the, the fellow next to her. And uh, we actually, this summer, had some amazing adventures on the bus. Uh, we traveled to Cape Cod. We spent a week at Woods Hole, the marine biology laboratory. And we were studying these guys. Um, they don't normally look like that. Um, this is actually, uh, does anybody know what this is? Sea urchin. Good. And uh, if you can see sort of faintly coming down into the beaker, um, that sort of stream of dark colored stuff, those are actually the sea urchin's eggs. Um, and this is a classic experiment which was piloted uh, in, um, in Woods Hall actually uh, 100 years ago now, um, where you can collect the sea urchin eggs, you can collect the sea urchin sperm, you can put them together, and this is a picture of uh, the experiment that as we uh, magnify that fertilized egg by about 400 times on the microscope. Um, and this movie is going to show you what the students are now able to do. These are, this is a, a lesson we aim for high school students. And what you were just watching is synchronous cell division during the first stages of embryogenesis. So in about 24 hours, that ball of eight individual cells is going to become a fully functional sea urchin larvae swimming around in the water. Uh, really, really fast experiment, really not that difficult <coughs> experiment. Why can't we have these experiments in, in classrooms? Well, one reason is because of the technology. Right? We have the technology you need to do to make these movies that students can use to make these movies on the bus. Another reason is the expertise. Um, on the bus is a shared resource. We have microscopes that no one school could afford, so we move around and we allow students at many different schools to make movies like this, to get inspired uh, by mitosis that they're actually uh, set up in an experiment that they have right on the microscope, as opposed to you know, memorizing. I'm sure you all have memories of memorizing the stages of mitosis uh, from a textbook, right? Pretty exciting memory, huh? <laughs> but this is the kind of thing that students will never forget when they see this on the microscope. Uh, I want to um, show you uh, that we're not just biologists. I actually studied physics as an undergraduate, and uh, we get uh, some really nice support from New York University, NYU, uh, to do some material science experiments. And this is one of our favorite material science experiments. Um, what you just saw was a solid. Let me replay that for you. <coughs> what you're seeing on the right hand is actually a solid. And that solid is turning, is getting larger, because you have a liquid on the left. And I want to show you this even bigger. And what you're actually seeing here are particles, uh, colloidal particles forming a solid, turning from a liquid into a solid as the water evaporates. Um, and in common parlance, this is called watching paint dry. What you're actually seeing here are individual particles of paint that are forming salt, forming a layer of dried paint. In this case, the students actually did a, a, a special version of the experiment where they decreased the, uh, where actually they increased the humidity so the drying happened very, very slowly and the paint actually formed a really nice crystal lattice right there. And I want to end uh, with this. Boring to watch paint dry? Like without a microscope in it. Without a microscope in it. And they love it. The world is much more exciting than some of the macroscopic world that they know. It's cool to watch paint dry. Yeah, it it's cool. amazing. I thought it was going to be boring. I thought I know. watching paint dry was boring, it was so but it's cool. awesome. <laughs> but it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to end there. Um, let me
me just uh, summarize a little bit and uh, ask you for your help. Um, we've been doing this uh, for four years now. We've had over 30,000 students on the bus in the last three years. Um, there's two full-time staff right now. We are hiring. Um, so uh, if anybody uh, shares this vision of really taking science, bringing it to the public, um, allowing people to have a chance to use the kind of tools that usually are completely limited to a scientific research lab, please help us. You can volunteer, um, you can donate to help the BioBus visit low-income neighborhoods, and um, as I mentioned, uh, we're also looking to expand our team. We want to build a new bus. Uh, it's going to be based on an Airstream uh, trailer model. Uh, we are also working on a bunch of um, interactive uh, video demonstrations that I'm really excited about that I hope we're going to give students a real um, tactile uh, interaction with the physics that's happening at the cellular level to try to give people that kind of intuition about what's happening on the, on the, the scale of their, their neutrophils, their white blood cells. So um, I'll end it there. Uh, Boring to watch paint dry? Like without a mic? I'll end it on this slide. Uh, we couldn't have done this project without incredible support um, from equipment manufacturers donating really, really state-of-the-art microscopes, uh, Olympus, uh, NYU, uh, Materials Research Science and Engineering Center, Modic, Nikon, Swift. Uh, I just have to thank them for their incredible generosity. And uh, please talk to me. I'd love to be in touch with you. And check out our website, biobus.org.